so the people should be here, they can be a problem. Wait, don't was it these guys? No. What? Was it really just these guys? Is these that I'm ashamed. Whoops. I'm pretty sure I was only at like eight when I got to this point. I should switch up again. Because, wow, this area just seems easy now. The first time it was like I got nothing. Alright, what do I want to do? What do I want to go? I need to go that way. Anything? There's anything. This is another street over this way. Did I go that way? I think I did. I just didn't like it. Was it just surrounded? I think it was just surrounded. Stop pushing the wrong button. Wasted a little bit of one extra bullet than I need to. Ergotine? Silicin? Uh, I'm not expecting some of these people to come back to my life. I can't believe I'm doing this. Hey man, free blood, I'll take it. This is despicable. Is that it? Oh, the music changing. Was I here before? I think I was. Yeah, I think I went all the way over to here and then I saw that guy. I was like, nope. I'll deal with that later. Yeah, yeah. I was just, wow, I went all the way over here. I was scared and I was loving skull. Skull. I can only see him in this mode.
large and beautiful knife with the name engraved on the blade. This must be Clay Cox's knife. A fine blade. No wonder he wants it back. So I was just blocked off by one enemy that I didn't want to fight yet. <sighs> Too, I guess, because no, I see this one is the only hard one so far. Right, how far is theirs? A little bit more. Farther. And there's no fast way up there. So I'll deal with those guys. I don't want to, but I gotta. Dealt with you before? I don't remember. Was there anything over here? Just free stuff. Just a lot of free stuff. Alright. Okie dokie. Oh, alright, you guys are in my way. It's like I've, I'm too OP. It's like I went the wrong way. I just went the wrong way. Ah, the sick. Oh, wait, that, that guy's. Who the heck is this? G. Griffin. Who the heck is that? Do I know you? Why does that name sound familiar? I mean, that name does sound familiar. Oh, maybe, maybe that's, maybe out of the neighbors that's ready to go. Uh. How far can I go? Skull. Unknown guy. I think I 
I think it was there. Perhaps we should have listened to what the idiot had to say first. Hello? Good evening, sir. Who the fuck are you? Don't you see I'm busy here? <sighs> Dr. Jonathan Reed, that's who I am. And who are you? Ah, oh, some fancy gentleman we've got here. Clear off. We don't want strangers on our streets. So you won't tell me your name, then? The name is Booth Digby. Maybe I'll ask my boys to break one or two of your bones, just oh, so you boys. remember it. <sighs> are you some kind of vigilante patrolling these streets at night? Something like that, but the police aren't in charge here. We are, see? So you're a concerned criminal, is that it? Using funny jokes about me and my boys, are you? Fuck, you must have some balls. I saw many men like you during the war, Mr. Digby. Greedy little cockroaches who feed on despair. I could kill you for saying that. But, nah. You've been a soldier, I can respect that. So, tell me about your gang, then. What? Have you got a death wish? You really want me to answer that? Well, yes. You seem so proud of your status. Why not tell me who you're working for? Oi! I'm the boss, all right? The wet boot boys work for me. All of them. <clears throat> Situation round here is better than other districts because of us. Because of me. What can you tell me about this part of town? Things ain't that bad, thanks to us. We give people what they need, and we control this borough. Well, you're not doing a very good job. People are still dying here, like everywhere else. Yeah, well, we can't be everywhere all the time. And if Weena says if we can find more guns, we could be more efficient. More efficient? Really? You should probably tell Edwina that guns are useless against diseases and infections. <laughs> Incredible. You know what? You're lucky she can't hear you right now. She's more smart than patient. My sweet queen of the docks. Both may be in love with Edwina. Cock. Oh. But she's the true leader of the gang. Oh. Oh. Interesting. Alright. I just met your wife. Cox. Well, kinda. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Digby. Oh, she's right there. All right. <laughs> you know what? I think she could have heard me. Good evening, miss. I am Dr. Reed. May I ask you a few questions? Who are you? What do you want? As I just told you, I'm a doctor. From the Pembroke Hospital, actually. The Pembroke Hospital, you say? I ain't paying any bill left by Clay. I'm not here to collect payment, miss. Miss Edwina Cox. So what do you want then? Fancy buying something from me, maybe? What can you tell me about your work? I'm a businesswoman. I buy and sell things. And I send my wet boot boys after anyone who don't play nice with me. Gang member and shopkeeper. Can't be easy running double shifts. If you're interested, I may find use of a doctor who can freely walk across the city, you know. You're quite blunt, aren't you? I like people who know what they want and say what they think. This is a time of great opportunity for those ready to embrace their destiny. I'm not interested in a career in the criminal underworld, Miss Cox. Fair enough. Stay away from us, then, if you don't want to get hurt or worse. Mm. Since my return from the war, I don't feel that concerned by threats, knives, or even bullets. You must know. That's exactly what that stupid trade unionist claimed after he attacked one of us. Booth and I reminded him a bullet beats words every time. Would the Nedwina Cox have recently killed a man in retaliation? Whew. You guys might be dead. I mean, I'm only level two. This guy's level five. Oof. Oof. What can I do with it? With the... He's level five, too. Oh my gosh. 
What can you tell me about this part of town? You can't trust anyone around here. As soon as you lower your guard, you can be sure some arsehole will take advantage of you. Really? Don't you think that's a little bit excessive? Bastards, all of them. This region only responds to violence and threats. You sound like you're thinking of somebody in particular. Take the grave diggers of Southwark. They must pay me every week, but it looks like they forgot who gave them permission to steal from the dead. Looting corpses in a mass grave? That's... That is a new low. Whatever. Hey, since you're a doctor and all, maybe you can access that forbidden area and remind those bastards what they owe. I think I already went there, though. Did I? I don't remember. You still use your husband's name, Edwina. Why is that? Why shouldn't I? He may be a bloody bastard, but I'm still his wife and his name means something round here. You oh, never paid him a visit at the Pembroke Hospital, did you? And I don't intend to. In Clay's case, I'm not against a medical mistake or a little help from the Spanish flu. <laughs> Ooh, Digby looks at you with love-struck eyes. Tell me, Edwina, is the feeling mutual? You have no idea how refreshing it can be for a woman to receive all the pleasure she needs. For once. Hmm. I'll take your word for it. What is it, Doctor? A woman's not supposed to talk about these things. Maybe. Uh. I'm not that easily shocked, Miss Cox. You can speak freely about your lover if you so wish. The poor bastard is good to me, if you must know. He makes me feel good. And that's a first. So you're just like any other couple, after all, are you not? Yeah, we're so ordinary that I'd put a bullet in his head if he ever cheated on me. <laughs> <laughs> Edwina suspects Booth Digby to be unfaithful. Tell me about the man you and Booth killed, Edwina. The bastard killed one of us and received retribution. There's nothing else to say. What happened exactly? I don't know and I don't care. One of ours was killed by that communist bastard. But he didn't brag for long. So you have no idea what really happened, but you executed him anyway. No one messes with the wet boot boys, Doctor. This is our territory, and this is our law. And your conscience is clear. You kill without hesitation. Violence is an efficient tool, Doctor Reed, when used properly. So you decide who lives and who dies, just like that? Yes, Doctor. Just like that. I'm not saying it's fair. I'm saying it's my way of dealing with troublemakers. Can I see what you have to sell? As long as you have money, I'll show you all I have. Mm, this is some good stuff. Do I want this? I want this. Okay, front. Suspects you to be unfaithful. Edwina's the one who asked to be called Mrs. Cox, even though Clay hadn't touched her for such a long time. You have not answered my question. She's a passionate woman. I've no doubt she'll shoot me down if I ever betray her, but that's not going to happen. I love her as she is. Tell me about the man you killed, Booth. What happened? One of us had been killed, so we had to retaliate. That's the whole story. There has to be more to it than that. No, really. One of us got killed, so the killer had to die. That's how things have always been done round here. No one gives a shit. Mm. 
Are you so heartless that you could pull the trigger and kill someone without even blinking? Have you looked around recently? Do you really think one more body will make a difference? Mm, guess not. Goodbye, Mr. Digby. That was good. I think I just gotta deal with the one guy. Yeah, with the fatigue. I can deal with you right now, huh? I better not mess up with you. <laughs> it's like if I mess up with you, whoo, I'm gonna be mad. Alright. So you're the main guy. I f screwed up so bad with her. Okay, that's so okay. I am kind of screwing up. Okay, I got a new mission to, uh. Well, where is it? Oh, it's over there. There's another... Oh, this, uh, this, that, does that really count as a grave, though? I don't think it counts as a grave. I guess it depends. Not for me, so no. I'll probably do that later, if I do need to go there. But I don't think I want to go back there for a while. I'd rather continue doing on with this, and then I'll talk about the play in a bit. So much stuff to do, I don't even know which way to go. The two are emotionally in love with each other. One definitely loves the other, while the other doesn't have enough faith. They're recruiting for some vengeance. In the meantime, the boys are waiting for our. Well, for your orders, my sweet queen. I hope the rumors about Clay are true. Otherwise. What did I miss? <laughs> Turn back for one second. Oh, what the heck? Oh, that's a rat. How's it? What the heck is that? The third. There's many rats right there. That's a lot. Oh, there's just people. I actually can't tell. Oh, my gosh, there's so many people to talk to. We got all there. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Why must it always be a good evening? I was just being polite. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you some questions, if I may. Don't like questions. Or doctors. And the name is Seymour Fishburne, if you must know. What can you tell me about this part of town? A shithole filled with maggots. Liars and thieves, all of them. Are you thinking about someone in particular? No. Nope. Hate them all. Mm. Especially these petty, whining little shitbag beggars. Is there no one who deserves your leniency, then? Well... Tom from our local is somewhat of a decent bloke. At least, unlike most maggots, he knows how to listen without opening his trap. What's your occupation? I take care of my mum. It's what I do. She's the only good thing in my life. Even though I don't treat her so good. You seem upset. Is something bothering you? I lost the necklace I bought her. I'm a fucking idiot. A worthless idiot. Sometimes it's hard to be a good son. I just want her to smile. No, I was thankful for her patience, appreciated like. God knows she deserves it. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne. Where's your thing at? You got a cold? Do I got things for a cold? Bronchitis. Oh, I do have colds. Yeah, I guess I'm the re. Good evening, Mr. Fishman. Yeah, yeah. Do you require medical assistance? <laughs> That's something I didn't expect to hear again. A doctor concerned with the health of his patients. Yeah. I could use some help. On several matters, in fact. 
I don't know which kind of doctor you're used to dealing with, but it's a doctor's purpose to heal people. And is it your purpose as well, Mr. Reed? I would say it's a convenient way for gaining people's trust. Alright, doctor, you got me there. You got me there! Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne. That's his mom. What's that? That's his mom. It's around here somewhere. Like, oh, do I really have to find it? Oh, that's gonna be a bomb. I see all that. I wish I have a feeling it's gonna be in there. Someone's there. Nope. Don't deal. Don't deal. Don't deal. Get out before it makes you do it. Oh, now nah, I can see them. Yeah, uh, get out. Don't deal with them until I get low up. That's the way out again later. I kind, of, I kind of forgot about the spot. It's locked, it's locked. alright. Beloved mother, Stella Fishburn, that sneaky bastard. Wait, what? What am I supposed I'll give it to the mom. Did I miss something? Okay, let's see if I can find mom. Hello. 
Hello, boy. Uh, hello. Good evening. Did I scare you? You have nothing to fear from me. No, it's just that people prefer to avoid me. Well, I, I won't. I'm a doctor. My name is Rufus, sir. Rufus Kingsbury. What can you tell me about this region? It's all about staying out of trouble. But since most people prefer to avoid me, it's pretty easy. Why do people avoid you? They call me Rufus the Curse. Hmm. Around here, I'm a bit of a bad luck charm. Hmm. Nemia, do I have that? Have you ever thought about leaving? Where else would I go? At least I know these streets and some people around here. This is my city, for better or worse. What do you do around here, Rufus? I listen to the news on the dock, sir. And I smile at those kind enough to spare me a bob. Do you have a job? It's hard to work. What with my head and all. Since I was a boy, I've always had trouble remembering what I do and why I do it. What do people say about this place? Things have been tense between the wet boot boys and the communists. Mm. They both feel they should run the dogs. Are you alone? Where is your family? I... I don't have any. My parents are dead. So you have no home? You're sleeping rough. No. I mean, yes. I live on the streets. I have no home. We're all alone. Mm. This city has abandoned so many of its children. It's tragic. Well, I've known worse. I'm not all alone. I have Mrs. Fishburne. She's been very kind to me. Why do you think she's so considerate? Can you tell me where she is? I can't say, sir. I guess she's a good soul. Sometimes it's like she replaces the mother I lost, even if we're not related. Stella is like a mother to Rufus Kingsbury. Screw you, kinda wish I didn't hear you. Rufus used Stella Fishburne as a mother. I started to work on YouTube. You guys were the first ones I was working on. Stable. Healthy. Critical. Stable. That quit though. Man. Do you need help? A real doctor caring about me. That's a first. I feel like a real person. The real doctor treats everyone the same, Rufus. I don't know what to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hippocratic oath. So long, Rufus. Yeah. Be careful. Take Being care. a true doctor right here. I wish uh, that she was cool. Uh, screw you. Good evening, madam. I'm Dr. Reed. Could I come in? Why? What do you want? I work at the Pembroke Hospital. I'm investigating the flu epidemic in this area. Oh, the Spanish flu. Well, that's quite liberal of you, Doctor. But this is no time to be knocking at people's doors. The disease takes away the good people too, madam. Why not let me in? It's Mrs. Fishburne. Stella Fishburne. And yes, indeed. Why not let a doctor in? Please How long were the event yourself. last in that one spot? Right, I'm not gonna... Well, I'm not gonna do anything, but I do wanna look around. Got any... Papers? 
Bloody God. Let's see it on the road, on the road, on the road. Pressure on something, but whatever. So you have questions about the flu then? Yes, among other things. Forgive my rudeness at the door. It's just my son doesn't like strangers coming mm. in the house. How is life around here? Life has always been hard in the East End. But it's everywhere nowadays, isn't it? Do you think the increase in violence has anything to do with the epidemic? Don't know. But it's most likely linked to the gangs, if you ask me. Recently, it's like everyone has had to pick a side. Mm. Violence has always fed on poverty, don't you think? It's a cruel law of the human condition. And selfishness is their rotten fruit. These days, you can just die in the gutter and no one will bat an eye. May I ask what you do for a living, Mrs. Fishburne? Since my husband died, I worked at the Dawson Rope Factory, but it closed before the war. I occasionally help at the night asylum in exchange for food. Did your husband die in the war? Oh no. My Jack was a docker. He died when my seamer was just a lad. The poor boy saw his dad slip and fall from that scaffolding. How do you pay the rent then? My seamer works at the docks, just like his dad. He's very attached to the house he grew up in. It's not always easy, but we get by all right. The orphan that regards you as a mother, please tell me about him, Stella. You mean Rufus? I wish I could do even more for the poor boy. Most people are so selfish. But you're not. Years may have passed. But I haven't forgotten how it feels to go through days with nothing but an empty stomach. I believe you may find this necklace of interest. What is it? I don't understand. It's a gift your son was hoping to give you. But I'm afraid it links him to the nearby murders. You mean this belongs to one of his victims? Jesus. I knew this day would come. Please, Dr. Reed. Accept this for your trouble and leave me be. This day? You mean you already knew? Are you buying my silence? I will not be an accomplice in this. What? No. No. My son's crimes distress me more than you can imagine. But I'm his mother. I love him, I do. <sighs> Dang. This time was like a mother to Rufus. Seems a habitual murderer. Right. Oh, as soon as this becomes healthy, you're sad, I guess, sad, but sad, that's you better. Your son's gone way beyond simply bullying people. He has a taste for blood, and you know it, don't you, Stella? One night, he told me straight up, mm. in his own words. It was several days after one of his episodes. Why did he confess? Did you suspect something? No. I guess he wanted his old mum to help him fight his, uh, demons. Hmm. Stella seems to be able to contain her son's seems regressive nature. She just seems contained by his mum. Did Seymour tell you everything that night? More than I could stand. The words he used to describe his hate, 
his rage, how he feels when he's done it. Tell me about these demons Seymour needs your help to fight. Seymour used to be such a happy child. And he is still a helping son most of the time. But when he gets angry, he can hardly contain his rage. All men and women are born innocent, Mrs. Fishburne. But there can be a monster within any of us. Do you think he can be cured, Doctor? Do you think something can extinguish this rage inside my Seymour? Crap. <laughs> Science has only just begun to investigate the mysteries of the human mind. Currently, we have more assumptions than fact. There ain't no hope, then. Somehow, somewhere, my son has turned into a monster, and nothing will bring him back. Stella, I know you are ashamed of your son's crimes. So why do you protect Seymour? I can't report my own son, can I? Not a burden I could bear. Burden? How do you mean? They'd hang him for sure. Mm. I won't send my only son to his death. Stella refuses to send her son Seymour to his death by denouncing him. I'm convinced you raised Seymour the best you could. You're not responsible for what he became. If someone ever found the courage to speak to the police, I will take my share. I hate him still white. Is it there's something else? Goodbye, Miss Fishburne. Take care of yourself. Well, I don't need to talk to the guy again. What about the kid, though? Just grow eyes in the back of that head, sir. Gentlemen are easy targets in these parts. Yeah. yeah well, that one was easy. I guess it's, I just had to go back to an area that already was. I was not expecting that, though. Uh, these ones I don't want to deal with right now. I'm still trying to deal with this. Good evening, Mr. Fishman. Yeah, yeah. Why is your mother protecting you, Seymour? I'm a son. She's the only one who knows me. Sometimes I think she knows me better than I know myself. I understand you love her, but can't you see the awful situation you've put her in? Do you think my mum would have a better life if I were dead? She seems so sad to know me sometimes. I don't believe death is the appropriate sentence for murder. Not in a civilized society. But the last word has to remain with the law. There is no law around here. No justice to be found. In these parts, revenge is the only answer. Tell me about the victims, Seymour. Who were they? Why them? Was there a link? Why should there be? They just kept getting on my nerves at the worst times, that's all. How many? How many victims? It's not like I keep records. It happens when it happens. You feel nothing, do you? No empathy for your victims at all. You seem pretty calm yourself, don't you? We're not talking about me. Is that right? Well, our calm's the only thing we have in common, then. Did you take pleasure in killing them, Seymour? All those people, all those lives extinguished. I take no pleasure from it. Just gives me peace. 
stills the anger for a time. This rage you feel, have you ever been able to control it? Resist it? I... I tried. For my mum, I tried for her. Telling the truth made me feel better. For a while. Don't you think you should seek help? Talk to someone you trust, someone who cares about you. No. And don't dare speak about me to your colleagues either. Keep your mouth shut tight, especially about my mum. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne. Do you got anything else? Evening, Rufus. Evening, Mr. Reed. So long, Rufus. Be careful. Take care. Alright, where am I going? What do I want to do? I'm missing the this side. I think I, I think these two are good. Yeah, this should be the shopkeep. I need to hear you. So for the thing, I just need to do that. I'm just gonna go do that thing and then I'm gonna call it a day. I think anything else to do. Yeah, this is where I found the the guy. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, sir. How are you tonight? Back to the docks, are we? You remember me, then? Of course I do. You're that man who seemed so lost when he entered my bar a few nights ago. Thank you for your hospitality. I'm Jonathan Reed, by the way. Uh, I'm still Tom Watts. Welcome back, Doctor. What can you tell me about this part of town? Well, it's not that bad. Thanks to people like the sad saint of the East End. Who? Sean Hampton, our own private holy figure. Few are foolish enough to make peace with the gangs. Sean is one of them. How is it you can keep this place open? This part of town doesn't seem particularly safe. Well, since everybody needs a drink, my pub is considered neutral ground by most groups. I see. So you get pressure from all sides about how this place should be run, do you? Oh, something like that. Nothing that a few wise words and a bottle of gin can't solve. You're something of a figurehead around here. I'm only pouring alcohol for everyone to forget their troubles. Sean Hampton is the one giving them long-term hope. Since I'm here, is there anything I can do? Well, perhaps, Doctor. Peace partly depends on my stock of gin. 
Uh, with the epidemic, my supplies are running low. How could a physician help you in this matter? I have a small warehouse just past the quarantine line. Perhaps, with you being a doctor, you could go there and come back? Doctors aren't immune to disease, <laughs> you know. Very well. Show me where it is. I'll see what I can do. Oh, thank you, sir. Here's the key to get in. You're about to save many dry throats. Sabrina seems very fond of you, Tom. I like her too. I really do. I know I'm her boss and I'm much older Oof. and all. But I like her for sure. What is bothering you then? Sabrina is an angry one. She wears it like a coat. I'm not sure I can make her shed that anger. Uh, it hurts to see her like that. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. She's angry, you say. Why is it so locked? I cannot enter. Where does this way go? Where does this way go? Oh, this is just was there, so. Uh, Still talking to live here. Baby. Perhaps I should shut the turquoise for Good a evening, time. sir. Whatever. Don't you recognize me? We met a few nights ago. Don't take it personally. I spent a lot of energy forgetting what I did the night before. Yes, you had definitely drunk too much then as well. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm Dyson Delaney. I'll try to remember you this time. What do you do for a living, Mr. Delaney? I drink. I drink in the morning and at noon. I drink at night and then I drink some more. Why do you drink so much? Maybe it's because I prefer dying slowly. Death can be so abrupt. Personally, I like to see mine coming at my own pace. You sound very sad, sir. That's because I am, Doc. Don't you work at all? I'd love to, but I don't have the time. Didn't I tell you? Drink in the morning and at noon, I'll drink at night, I mean, why don't you just focus on drinking at night and then working in there in the day? Is there anything in particular that you like about this part of town? Except for the cheap drinks, I mean. How dare you say such a thing? I love this neighborhood. So friendly. So joyful. No reason at all to rejoice, then? Life is hopeless and then we die, is that it? Let me tell you a story. All right. All right. Go on. A few years ago, when I believed a resolute man could change things around here for good, a tragedy occurred nearby. What kind of tragedy? It was a bomb. A bomb that exploded and killed many people. Metal and blood everywhere. Shouts. Fire. A broken window of the shoe shop. The torn street light. You lost people you loved that day. Didn't you? I've lost everything. But you know what the worst part is? I don't even remember where it happened. Mm. I've drunk so much to forget it. And now I can't remember where it was. I can't pay my homage to the dead. I'm sorry, Mr. Delaney. It's okay. If you ever find the place, just leave a flower for me there. Even if you tell me where it is, I'm not sure I'd memorize it. Is there anything in particular that you like about this part of town? 
Except for the cheap drinks, I mean. Literally, that day. What? Oh, she. I don't know, I can skip it. Surely you must have had dreams and expectations when you were young, like everybody else. Sure. I wanted things to change. To really change. And to change for good. The bigger the dream, the harder the fall. Sounds like you were an idealist, which is honorable. No, sir. I was an anarchist, and I believe that exclusive property is a robbery in nature. I wanted a new world to rise from the ashes, Dr. Reed. Dyson was an impassioned and radical anarchist when younger. Do you really think the world is that bad? No. I believe we all can choose to make it better. But most of us are too weak, mm. too corrupt and too guilty. I failed for sure, but others will come. I want to know more about your past as an anarchist, Dyson. I'm still an anarchist, Doctor. Make no mistake. I just reject violence as a tool to change the world, unlike my comrades. Do you still see your comrades, then? Even if you don't agree with their methods anymore, I mean. No. I hope they'll come to share my point of view one day. I'll raise my glass to that splendid idea. I want to know more about your past as an anarchist, Dyson. I'm still an anarchist, Doctor. Make no mistake. I just reject violence as a tool to change the world, unlike my comrades. Do you believe in a bloodless revolution, then? I do not believe in much anymore, Doctor. But I'll admit, I like your idea of peaceful change. I like it a lot. Now I'm done. Yep, now I'm done. Goodbye, Mr. Delaney. It's a good thing you cannot see me now, Mum. Evening, Miss. Well, I never. That's a first. Customers who make that much mess rarely come back. Don't mind in fancy togs. I'm much more myself than when we first met. By the way, I'm Jonathan. Dr. Jonathan Reed. Welcome back to the Turquoise Turtle, then, Doctor. I'm Sabrina Cavendish. How can I help you? Why do you seem up here now? What can you tell me about this area? People don't appreciate that line of questioning round here. You'd best be more careful with what you say, sir. You look concerned, Miss Cavendish. This is a bad borough. Most people I know are afraid. Most locals will rob you blind, or worse. You best mind your step. Please, the docks are dangerous, feels unsafe there. Sabrina has her true feelings about her boss. Yep. yep. Okay. Sure, I forgot to heal him. Whoops. So, you and your friends all feel in danger? No exceptions? Tom's the only exception I've come across until now. But he's. He's not like everybody else. This place seems, how shall I put it, very colorful. I'm sure it has plenty of stories to tell. We get people of all sorts here. It's that rare place in the docks where you can have a drink without being murdered. At least it's not happened yet. Yep. So this bar is neutral territory then? Yeah. Tom's convinced this is something the locals need. No one ever draws a weapon here. That's one of the reasons I accepted the job. Mm. Your boss must be quite the negotiator to force such an agreement. Yeah. Tom's a great bloke. Mr. Hampton, who runs the night asylum, he's the only other man that's able to keep peace around here. Oh, 
there. Uh... Excuse my curiosity, but where exactly are you from, Miss Cavendish? Something bothering you? What, my name? Or my complexion? Believe me, I never judge someone on their place of birth or the color of their skin. If that's true, you'd be one of the few not to make fun of me. Just you, Tom, Dyson, Miss Fishburne, and of course, Mr. Hampton. I'm sorry if I worried you. I was just curious to find out if you know this part of town well. Nosy. <laughs> my dad was a sailor from Bombay, and my mum was a maid born up in Glasgow. They got married in London. And here I am. Sabrina, tell me about your true feelings for your boss. I love Tom. Not ashamed of it. Don't care if the customers joke about it, neither. Who's mocking you? I mean, we're always together. People will talk, won't they? Mm. Does Tom love you? Yeah, but he's always reluctant to take it further. <laughs> it's not because I'm younger, or because of the color of my skin. He hates jokes about us. Mm. It's like, can Goodbye, I make these Cavendish. happy endings? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Welcome back, Doctor. What can I do for you? Why does your waitress feel in danger working on the docks? This part of town is dangerous for all, but for women it's worse, as always. Sabrina is a brave girl, but she can't help feeling in danger. Do you think she has good reason to feel this way? Are you not worried about her safety? Of course I am. The truth is, she's tougher than me deep inside. She mm. just has to learn to control it. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. I uh, hear you. I'm uh, sorry, I want to do this. Good evening, Mr. Delaney. What? Ah, oh, you're a doctor. Uh, nothing else, right? There's that, but I don't want to talk about that. Inebriation aside, do you need medical help? Yes. I feel sicker than usual these days. Take this, then. And perhaps you could try to slow down the alcohol intake, too. Hey, Doc, you don't really want me to stop the only remedy I can afford. Goodbye, Mr. Delaney. Right, I feel better now. Where, where could this be? Ugh. I just had to ask. Alright, this one's closer. God damn. That's like right next door. I could have gone there earlier. Why am I. Did I get enough? I did actually don't remember. Did I do something? Too big, man. Right. I don't think it should be that hard. For this, I'll just go back. Is it this way? Kinda. Yeah, this is the tutorial, isn't it? So, oh, is it in there? I think so. Dang it. How do I do this again? I should have. 
I just go around? believe I'm doing this. This is no over there. arrested for attempted murder. Last night a young man named Tom Watts was arrested by the police for attempted murder in the renowned restaurant. The Silver Bell on per Civil Street. The suspect was spotted standing in front of the restaurant pointing a gun at customers for about one minute without firing. Two witnesses promptly reported this behavior. Watts was arrested without an incident but refused to give any explanation of his actions and only gave his name. His gun was loaded, confirmed. The policeman who Answered our questions is likely that Watts will feel the full force of His Majesty's courts for this transgression. The young man shall be jailed for a few years at least. Tom. Is that the drunk guy? No, it's this guy. Tom had been in jail for attempted murder. Uh, that's kind of out of the blue. Hello? Tom has so much alcohol, he could keep this district afloat for quite some time. Nice. Similar to the tutorial level that I had earlier. Uh, why would I want to keep it? Does it actually make it better? No, I have enough bottles. <laughs> what? It's kind of stupid. <laughs> like, why would you want to lie? Welcome back, Doctor. What can I do for you? Tell me about your 
arrest for attempted murder, Tom. I tried to kill someone. Mm. I got arrested. I paid my debt, and I have nothing to hide. So you mean your customers know about your sordid past? Yeah, why do you think this is the last pub open? I have nothing to hide, and I don't judge. That's a relief for many round here. Do you think prison changed you? Made you a better man? Oh, I don't know about that. All I brought back is bad memories, scars, <laughs> and an ugly tattoo of a blue turtle. But do you feel cleansed of your sins? All I know is that I'm at peace. I did what I did, but I wouldn't do it again. Does that make me a better man? I don't know. Why not leave town and start a new life after you got out of jail? I grew up in the East End. This is where my roots are. This is where I want to help others and die eventually. Do you think the docks will always be a hive of scum and villainy? As long as poverty and fear run the show, I don't see how it would change. Misery loves company, as they say. Don't you feel threatened? Staying in such a violent and criminal neighborhood? I've made peace with my violent past, Dr. Reed. I may not be a pacifist, but I'm not angry anymore. Don't you know such criminal lifestyle. Do you think the docks will always be a hive of scum and villainy? Yeah, as long as poverty and fear run the show, I don't see how it would change. Misery loves company, as they say. You attempted murder. Give me some details. I was given an order. Mm. An order to kill. I was an <sighs> obedient gang member Great. at the time. A proud, wet boot boy. <sighs> Why did you join the gang? Because I finally felt useful. Do you have any idea what it means to feel respected when the rest of the world shits on you? So you were ordered to kill someone. What happened then? I don't know if you can possibly understand, but... I couldn't kill him. I just stood there, pointing my gun. Someone saw me. I gave up. Why couldn't you shoot? My target was eating in that fancy restaurant with mirrors and music. He was eating, drinking, laughing. He was having such a good time. I hated him for his bottomless appetite, an easy life of easy pickings. And then something happened. You've had a sad, violent and lonely life with no joy to speak of. You realized that you were living with nothing but sadness. No, not really. I had friends and happiness in my life. That was more about just being pleased for the guy. Hmm. You lied to me, Tom. Your warehouse wasn't empty. It was inhabited with armed vigilantes. I'm sorry, Dr. Reed, but I thought those Prewan guards would be willing to let someone like you pass without trouble. That was devious of you, Tom. Next time you can bloody well go yourself. I apologize, Doctor. But it's just that I prefer to avoid the law, its enforcers, and all manner of thugs in uniform. Mm. Don't prefer to avoid the law its enforcers. Hmm. Cause of that, we're, we're alive. Nah, here, here you go. Here is your booze. I hope it will appease your customers. Just try not to kill anyone with this poison of yours. <laughs> Believe me, Doctor. Most of my customers are less agreeable when sober. Nice. I'm missing a hint. Goodbye, Mr. Watt. She has to do with the girl. Uh, there she is. Shut the turquoise for a time. You're still working at this hour. That's what I call dedication. 
Were you aware of Tom's past incarceration? That's the first thing he told me when he offered me the job. Mm. He didn't want me hearing about his past from anyone else. Did it surprise you to find out about it? Not really. I was already aware of his reputation before I met him. That's why I came to the Turtle in the first place. Most people would have run away because of that. Not me. I thought a man like him could give me stability, you know? At least to some degree. And I wasn't mistaken. Tell me, Sabrina, do you really believe Tom has renounced his life of crime? He proves it to me every day he tells the truth. Tom Watts is a good man. One of the best. And you don't think he might fall back into his <laughs> sordid ways? We can all do no. terrible things, Dr. Reed. And we never know what we're really capable of until it's too late. Mm. What is the last thing I'm missing? Goodbye, Miss Cavendish. Alright, uh, missing something. I just don't know what it is. I'm missing all these people. So where are they? So I want to find them before I move on. What did you get up there? Alright, where, where can I go? I'm pretty sure I got it. No, I have it. No, I have it. Kind of feeling it's over here now. I don't want to go there yet. I don't want to go there. Bad feeling. Alright, if anything. Alright, let's see. I finished everything. Later, later, both the same spot basically. Work on this. I got that. Uh, next time. Then I gotta wait for a day. Success, success. The event is gonna bug me if I can do it. Yeah. I the rear. I just sucks. Uh, yeah, let's deal with the people there. Where are they? Shit. It's over there. Did it really work that far? Yeah, that, that's, that's this guy. I don't want to deal with them until later. Shoot. Just to find out what the heck is over there. It's a big spot. If it's this whole thing. If anything, worry about later. Now, that guy's easy to say, the guy that might cause me some problems.
Dang, come on. Whoa, what the heck was that? How is that a bus? Oh, is it a bus? Maybe. Dr. Strickland's list. Ordered by Dr. Thoreau Strickland from Brook Hospital. This is, this is ingredients Larigma, Papaveras, Medical Opium, Sodium Hypochlorite, and Potassium Permanganate. Opium? is one of the main ingredients of Strickland's medication. Never a good move. Yep. Alright, I got two things I can do right now. Gosh, thanks so much. And this time I tell him I can load up the thing. I did all that and I still can load up. Is the baby actually something, or is it just like just there in this drawer? Because it can just be there. Let's see. The reason for this? It's just a shortcut, maybe. Hello Frank, how are you, my old friend? It was good to see you last week. Next time let me get the rounds in. Hope everything is okay on your side of town here. In your old neighborhood, the situation is getting worse. Clay is getting more violent every day and is only thinking about expansion. You want it seems there are some new players around trying to dispute our territory. The web boot boys are in a bad spot, I'm afraid. So I thought about what you said last time we met. That you never regretted leaving the gang. That the only thing you regret is never being able to put foot in the East End again. To avoid a good beating or worse, well, rest assured that you'd have my protection if you decided to pass by. Maybe we could take again, talk again about new opportunities and job offer. You know, I have always been good with numbers, so maybe if you need an accountant in your company, let's talk about that, shall we? Say hello your old, to your wife for me, <laughs> WPP for life. Old chap, Booth DP. Okay. Uh, Booth and Rina. Uh, Booth has already tried to find a job so he could quit the Webboot Boys. Interesting. Does that count as cheating? Uh, I mean, not, not normally. That's interesting. That is interesting. I did not expect that at all. No reason to go that way. Maybe. I said I don't have a reason. I'm just messing around. Damn, I just want to take something. I basically just went the long way around.
Let's put things in their ambush, please. Don't let them in their ambush. Just don't let them in their ambush, please, please, please. I already used my resources. I already used them up. I just need some rats. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm out. Like, I only got like a sliver of health. <laughs> Is there no rats on the side? I should don't remember. Oh. Alright, uh. I don't know what to do with your headache, man. I'm sorry. I'm really thinking. Oh, shoot. Uh, dang it. I should have talked to the guy before. I don't. Just dang it. I forgot to talk to the guy. I have found a gift from your wife. In that case, you'll be properly rewarded, Doc. Clay Cox is a man of his word. I hope that won't make me an accomplice to your future crimes. Who knows what I might do now I feel invincible again. I'll leave you for now, Mr. Cox. Yeah, for now. Still think I'm gonna kill you? First, I just need to talk to these people again. I should have talked before I came back. I kind of forgot. No, I already did forget. I forgot I got that letter at all. Let's focus on other things again. You again. What do you want? I know you're looking for an honest job, Booth. You're tired of this criminal life, aren't you? It's just an idea. Edwina loves to run things so much. You can never really leave the gang. Wet boys for life, you know. Bad boys for life. Goodbye, Mr. Digby. Is Edwina gonna say anything about this? Maybe. Let's see. Good evening, Miss Cox. Hello again, Dr. Reed. What do you want? Oh, nope. Goodbye, Miss Cox. Okay. I wanna kill Co I wanna kill Mr. Cox. Sure Let up, from. sir. It's been a while since we've seen any new faces, Rand. A little bit faster, maybe. No, maybe not. Can 
Okay, this is like faster to the back. I don't want to the back, I want to go to the front. Hopefully now I can figure out his things. Hello again, Dr. Reed. I feel better already. Can I go soon? Uh, I'm not sure, no I? Goodbye, Mr. Hampton. We'll talk again later. Wait, who should I talk to? Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? What do you think of Dr. Ackroyd's aversion to modern medical methods? It's a shame he's so narrow-minded. Dr. Swansea taught me that science is about exploring uncharted territory. I'm convinced that's true. With the influenza and all that's going on, you should put your differences aside, don't you think? Why is it so difficult to work together? I believe that if Dr. Ackroyd had been the one to discover the transfusion process, he would be the first to recommend its use. So you believe it's just a question of jealousy and pride? Dr. Ackroyd is as proud as he is blinded by his obsolete concept of medical science. Tell me more about your willingness to experiment with new medical techniques. Harvey Fiddick is a patient suffering from a severe injury that could cripple him if not treated correctly. I'm convinced your blood transfusion technique could help him. What is it you really want? To save him? Or to prove your point? Fair question. I want nothing but to save my patient, Dr. Reed. Especially since I know Mr. Fiddick's story. This personal involvement could also appear to be a lack of impartiality. You must know that a good surgeon must remain neutral. I agree. But that does not excuse Dr. Ackroyd's behavior, a man who did not even take time to converse with his patient. Do you think keeping his distance was a mistake? All I know is that I'm taking care of human beings with desires, hopes, and fears. Not some biological machine comprised of blood, bones, and flesh. I located the shop, but it was vandalized, and the owner is missing. All I found was your order. I was afraid of such bad news. People are so desperate they're ready to burgle a shop for drugs. That's quite a list you ordered. Opium, sodium hypochlorite. It can't be just headaches you're trying to cure. This dreadful influenza, of course. I already ran some tests on hopeless cases. Without success, I must admit. Do you realize you could create a lethal poison without the correct dosage? Then there are the legal ramifications. Is this not true of any medical substance, uh... Dr. Lee? However, if you would agree to improve it, I'd be glad to accept your help. As long as you promise to be scrupulous with your experiments, I may try to gather these substances and even help improve upon the mixture. That's all I'm asking for, Dr. Reed. That's all I'm asking. I want to know about these secret tests you run and if they can save people from this epidemic. Speak to me now, Thoreau. I know I may sound presumptuous, but I'm just following your steps, Dr. Reed. I'm casting away the shadows of ignorance by daring to face them. Self-confidence is essential in our line of work, my young colleague. But only if tempered with the correct amount of cynicism. But you never doubt yourself, Dr. Reed. I've read all your articles and books. You performed the most daring research during the war.
You have my support, Dr. Strickland. I know exactly what it feels like to battle an unknown disease with only your mind and force of will to help you. Thank you, Dr. Reed. You don't know what that means to me. Let's go up there. Help oh, that. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Oh, I can't let Strickland put his patients at risk with opium. Perhaps an adjusted formula will deliver more of a placebo effect. Do I have those? I don't even know. Just as we can see if we can do it. Uh, where's the doctor? There's the doctor. I'm quite busy right now, Dr. Reed. Do you think Dr. Strickland has any chance of curing the Spanish flu by himself? His wish to cure the sick is not driven by pride, but by an idealistic view about our mission here. Honestly, I don't know which is worse. You consider him a good practitioner? Yet you will not report his methods. Strickland may be a rival, but I will not use dirty tricks or regulations to prove him wrong. We are doctors, not politicians. Hmm. Why well, when I use regulations to survey their Strickland suspect their rivalry? For game, eh? For game. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Does that have anything to do with him? Maybe we've been at. There's a ask, where is he? I lost him. Oh, this boss is just huge. He's over there. Good evening, sir. Oh, but that's different. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? Did you know Dr. Ackroyd never reported your experimental research? Despite the fact he doesn't agree with it. Really? I didn't suspect he knew about my work. I must confess I am surprised. Perhaps he thinks you should realize for yourself the danger of what you're doing. See how condescending he can be? My God, he can be so irritating. Goodbye, <sighs> Dr. Stephen. Just took the bed and take the bed. All right. Just gotta go to my room. Just gotta go to my room. I get around to the top floor. Uh, any supplies? Uh, I should put them clean since the last time. Uh, let's see. Oh my god, oh my god. I don't, still don't know what to do with the, the plant. Do I the things? Strickland's project could be dangerous. I have a mind to rip. Port him to Dr. Ackroyd. This is actually toughy. Um, huh. I don't think. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna go in the bottle. in the 
circumstances, I'm... Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? I have managed to improve the mixture by diluting it. Have you ever heard of Sir Joseph Francis Olive? Or the placebo effect? No, I don't think so. Why? A placebo is a substance or procedure that has no actual physical effect. You made a placebo of my project. Why? Research has established that a placebo, as long as the subject believes in the effect, can provoke a positive physiological reaction. Really? That's fascinating. And you want me to, what, administer the placebo and see what occurs? Something like that, yes. Well, I'm a bit surprised, but I trust you, Dr. Reed. Please take the key to my cabinet and put this placebo there for future use. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Upstairs. Right upstairs. Come now, we can handle this. I really didn't need to finish hers. Is right here? Where? What? Was it this one? It's locked. Patient Mortimer Goswick Mill, age 23, followed by Dr. Eckward, status convalescence, date of mission 27th October, date of release to be determined. The patient shows many signs of extreme fatigue and major sores on the throat, mouth, and tongue, but no sign of flu. Refuses to speak, claims it is too painful, needs rest, healing of throat, mucous membrane before any decision can be made concerning his release. Determined whatever is not affected with Spanish flu. Good. Three if that's a bad thing. It's locked, all right. Why are these locked? It's locked. Why are these locked? Where are these? There's a letter to Dr. Swansea. Pembroke Hospital, 14th of October. Dear Dr. Swansea, despite the actual urgency of the sanitary situation, I must inform you of a recent case of professional misconduct inside the Pembroke Hospital. Nurse Gwyneth Branigan has been found guilty of undeniable unprofessional conduct and thus guilty by endangering a patient under no circumstances should the nurse take a nurse establish a prescription without at least informing the referral doctor about it, their conclusion. Now we had Grand Rat against personal initiative when it is for the interest of all, especially during a crisis like the one we are facing. We can't allow a nurse to perform a diagnosis and decide on a procedure to apply to a patient. The fact that said patient survived is no attenuating circumstance. It just means we dodged the bullet this time. We have the strictest authority in this matter. Very respectfully, Dr. Robert Yaku. Overqualified. My has been suspected of neglecting her professional duties. Ooh, something to talk about. Uh, not the thing I was expecting right now. I was expecting something better. Alright, but yeah, I guess it will put away. At least Strickland can't kill anyone with this formula. It's locked, all right. I think I have to kill him to open him, but it's like, I don't want to do that. Uh, am I done? I'm done. Alright, just this one. Uh, later. Later. 
I need to wait for a day, so I think, I think I should go with if I can. Let's see, it's almost 30. Can I just stop and just end it? I don't know. Let's see, first for me. I feel like I should be like, go to like a place where...